come to Brazil. I want to come to Brazil so much, but I'm trying to come to Brazil, not for a show. I really want to do the Yemaya procession at New Year's Eve by the Awa, by the, and the beach. So, uh, you know, hopefully I could come and all this crazy stuff. And it, hopefully it would be my absolute dream to come um, on New Year's Eve for 2021. To God, he was worth it. Someone you want to save me Life in a better case I fuck up, I'd fuck You love me, sweetie, you haunt me Let me know there's everything I'm like the biggest FKA Twix fan in the world Fuck Our favorite songs include Hi, Poppy Pacify Me, Two Weeks um, Good to Love I absolutely love Cellophane, Mary Magdalene, um, the entire Magdalene album, to be honest, which I'm a big fan, big fan, big fan. It's only the get me started because I won't stop. <laughs> What's your Venus and your Mars? Why are you trying to date me? Um, no, my Venus is in Gemini and my Mars is in... Taurus. And I was like laughing at myself the other day, like, why did I tell colors that I don't know much about horoscopes when I actually, I actually know so much about astrology. The Gemini in me always thinks that I'm never, I don't know about something well enough. So I always like, I like for anything, like if I could know about it for like really know about it and I'll be like, no, I don't, I don't know about it that well. I, I, I feel like everyone else knows about it better than I do. I know a hell of a lot about astrology actually. Um, your Venus is like how you, um, basically to sum it up, is how you love, how you, uh, how you are in relationships, how you break your intimacies, and um, and Mars is, um, I don't know, kind of what the Mars is. I know that I'm a Taurus though in Mars, so whatever that means, it means that I'm a down ass bitch. Period. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Faster. Will you dance to this beat and hold a lovely glow? And hold a big So this goes your own voice and can someone explain to me what your Mars is? Because I would love to know that. That'd be really great. What's your favorite herb? Like my favorite weed? Okay, I got so many fa favorite flavors. I love moochie. Moochie's a, I was smoking some moochie. Let me go see what I got. Um, I like smoking mochi. Mochi's really good. I like Jack Herrera as my sativa in the daytime. Boom. I uh, smoked some delicious lemon meringue recently. Boom, she's gone. I uh, had some good gelato. That was fantastic. Um, I got some really good plugs. I can't lie. I'll be smoking some really good shit. What does your Scorpio rising represent to you? Hmm. Uh, I think it's just kind of like my Scorpio rising is I definitely have a lot of Scorpio energy. Like I'm very um like my sensuality and how I come off is very dark and Scorpio like and gothic and you know a little sexy and, and a little dark to be honest with you. I'm into some weird shit. And uh the music that I like, obviously, my style. It's very Scorpio, you know? Every time I'm, like, in black, I'm like, oh, that's very Scorpio of you, Destiny. I like blood a lot. Um, I like blood and spit. And I feel like that's the most Scorpio thing you could ever say. Like, what? Um, I also, I'm very mysterious. I didn't notice. Um, but growing up, apparently, I came, I've come off as a Scorpio my whole life because 
always in school people would be like oh she's so interesting she's so she's you know like i think i don't know that kind of thing i guess hmm. okay what else alone at the moment inside how do you manage your mental health um i pray a lot i pray every morning and sometimes every night i just pray and i practice a lot of holistic living you know i used to be a really crazy teenager and i used to eat terrible and not treat myself the best like as any person does i'm sure and then i just started to really wake up and realize that i was holding on to trauma and pain and and i had terrible eating habits and i just it just wasn't healthy so so many things started coming to me and i remember that i've always had problems with my mental health and the better I treated myself and the better I treated my body and my spirit, um, the better I felt as a person. So I, I just maintain my mental health by trying to maintain my, my piousness, my spirituality, my rituals, my practices. Um, when I was 18, I read the autobiography of a yogi. And it changed my life and it just, you know, it put me on to like the virtues of goodness and good godliness and how you treat others. So like if I'm practicing goodness, I'm good in my mind. And you know, when I'm feeling sad, I like to cook and I like to take a nice bike ride. That's how I try to do it. Rain drops on roses and houses like trusses and oranges and taking baths. I know a few more of your least favorite things. Rain dry and girls in white dresses. And Any good books you've read recently? Yeah, I read Children of Blood and Bone. Um, and it's one of the best uh, just African sci-fis I've ever re read. Um, I'll show you guys. If I could recommend a book to anyone, it is this incredible book. It's called Children of Blood and Bone. It was written by, um, I don't want to say her name properly, Tomi Adayemi. She's just a beautiful Nigerian sister, and she's just incredible. And I read this book, and I wrote to her, and she actually sent me the unreleased manuscript of the second book, so I got to have it before the second one came out. And it was, like, honestly, like, the biggest, coolest celebrity flex I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like, the moment I got the unreleased manuscript, my nerd clout went up, and I said, that was really fun. <laughs> she's so young too. Yeah, she's an incredible young sister. And I'm, I just, this book is, um, if I can show you a bit of the, in, the inside, because we love a good map and we love a good sci-fi moment. Um, this is a fictional, fictional place based on Nigerian um, cities. And it's about a futurist, uh, a futurist world where in this fictional Nigerian country, um, magic and natural sciences and the way of the people have been um, brutally taken from the citizens. And there's this really powerful protagonist um, who is called by her ancestors and her Orishas to um, essentially bring magic back to the people. And she lives in a very, very cruel society that is um, against magic and the history that comes from it. So those people, the royals, um, the royals basically did it. I can't go live with nobody. I'm sorry. I be seeing the lives that be going on and it's wild. I can, like, if I, I would die of mortification and shame if um, I went into a live and, like, someone's, like, snorting cocaine or, like, it's just, I, I would just be mortified. Like, like, I, I like, shock value shit. Mm -mm, I'm not going to do it. Mm -mm. And then, like, there's sometimes there's people that just, like, they get so excited to talk to me that they don't know how to talk to me. So I just, like, it's just, like, a bunch of, like, oh, my God, I can't believe you picked me. 
And I'm like, all right, good. All right, let's have a moment, though. Like, let me, let me tell me about your day. <laughs> and then sometimes, one time, I had a fan who, like, wanted to do a live with me. And then he was, like, really Christian, and which I'm down with. You know, it's like, whatever. I'm always on my non-denominational. Uh, if I if I were to, like, I... I, I I love the Baptist church a lot. So, like, I'm I'm not against, you know, a lot of monotheistic Christian-based religions. It's, like, beautiful. But this man wanted to press. He was like, girl, I love your music. But we're going to have to talk about that witchcraft stuff. And then just, like, went on this whole tangent about the Bible. And I was like, oh, no. I'm not doing this again. And I very, and I did, remember, George? Remember, George? I respect it. Oh, my God. See, my daughter is. She, my daughter's on fucking point. I, oh my God. I was like, mm-hmm, honey. You know, because I, I, I have manners more than anything. And I'm very grown in that sense. Like, I'm a young person, but I'm grown. So I'm like, okay, that's your opinion. You want some shit? Basically, he just auntied the fuck out of me. And I auntied him back. And I was like, uh-huh, honey. Well, you know, everybody is, you know, um, I basically hit him with the cultural you know, hair, like the cultural, biological aspect of what we practice as Caribbean people. And I was just like, you got to be bugging if you think your fucking Jesus is white, too. But I didn't hit him with that. I just was like, OK, sweetheart. Well, you know, everybody is up into their own opinion. And God, if you truly uh, practice the values and the virtues of the commandments in God and Christianity, well, you know that Jesus was the most compassionate and non-judgmental person in the world. So, darling, um. Well, you know, you are free to worship as you do without any judgment, and so am I. And I've had many conversations like that with a lot of people, and I've never been bothered. You know, I've been told a lot of nasty things about myself and about what I practice and what I believe, and I've never fought fire with fire. I always felt that the only way to really tell somebody off is to be intelligent with your response and how you tell them. And I truly believe in what I believe in. And I don't take it personal if someone does not. And I'm not, I am not. don't take it personal if someone is trying to defile what I believe in. What I believe in comes from Africa. And that is the most prophetic thing in the world, darling. So if you are trying to denounce the beauty and the, I mean, sacred aspect of where my family essentially comes from in one side of my family, then you're not respecting me. You're not respecting me, and then I'm going to just tell you that you're being anti-black. That's, that's it. That's it. That's it, period. And we, gonna have, we don't have to talk. We don't have to agree on anything. That's just how I feel. We don't have to agree on nothing. <clears throat> Hola, Naomi. I love Naomi. A wonderful time uh, working with FBI, which is my one of my favorite groups of the last generate, like the last decade. And you know, my my sisters Lisa and Naomi, they are wonderful. When they came out with their debut album, I was just so fascinated and just so inspired. And songs like songs like Oya and uh, like. Down by the river, watch my soul, I go down by the river. I just remember thinking, this is this is the music that was made for me. And then, um, you know, we have really good mutual friends, and we ended up hanging out, and I love those girls. They my girl. Those are my sisters. I always feel like I'm their triplet when I'm with them, and um, I really, really care about them. Those, they're just the best. They're like some of the best musicians, you know, in, in this fucking generation of, of all time, honestly. Okay, we the music stopped though. But the music stopped, okay? I seen somebody talking about fly leaf. We could definitely put on fly leaf. This is one of my favorite songs. And like I have a very personal relationship with God. Like I'm a Christian goth all the way. And like this all around me, it's like about God. Cause it's a Christian, but it's a Christian rock band. Um, so it's like, uh, your hands float up above me and you whispered you love me. And I began to fade into a secret place. And I remember re reading, hearing that and um, 
feeling God touch me and going like I feel like that, like my hands float, like you know, like when Christians like they do that when they pray, when they praise, and I just remember thinking like your hands float up above. What's your favorite song in existence? I have so many favorite songs, so I don't, I can't tell you that, but I tell you one of my favorite songs. Um, Gotta Move, Barbara Streisand. All my young gays should put it on, should throw on a feather boa, light a cigarette, do your thing. <laughs> God, the light inside. That's what she's talking about. Are you currently in a relationship? Um, no, I'm single and I believe in loving my friends. What inspired you to write Your Eyes Are Bleeding? Um, that song was inspired by uh, the common pattern in my life of being mistreated and disappointed and abandoned by my loved ones friends and romantic partners and ever i think i remember just like everyone in my life just it was just was not good to me after i'd been so good to them and i loved the people in my life so much and i was so generous and so i just i was so in love with them like and i just remember they just treated me like shit and i was like it was just kind of like I remember just this reoccurring theme in my life, like my foster mother didn't like me, my teachers didn't like me, um, just people always blaming me for something that I had nothing I, I had no control over and demonizing me for things that were just only, were actually just reflections of their own insecurities and, and problems with themselves. And um, I remember just always feeling like, wow, it's always my fault. I'm wrong even when I'm right. Um, and I'm always saying sorry for something. Um, and I just remember like, just feeling really uh, empty. And the song like, um, falling back on things I had, I, I ruin everything. How does that song go? I have to put it on because I don't have terrible memory. Your eyes are bleeding. But yeah, that's kind of just what the song was about, you know, just like that kind of realization that I, I don't, I don't have any control over anything <laughs> and I'm always wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it was. <laughs> yes, everything's my fault and it's the bad luck that I bring, so. <laughs> Um, I wonder the lyrics. I, I want to look at these lyrics because it's very important for me to look at this and answer that question. Oh, it's gone. Whatever. <sighs> Funny drunk stories. On May 5th of 2008, I got terribly drunk in a handball court when I was 15 years old. And I was absolutely wilding in the streets, honey. And I was just, oh my God, I was such a little drunk mess. I was drinking Double Spring, which is a disgusting alcohol. And, um, oh, fuck. Oh my God, it was just bad. And then I went up to my foster home and my foster brother was like, I was just yelling and crying because my first boyfriend, he wasn't being nice to me and he just didn't love me anymore and it broke my heart. And I just remember just like losing my mind. I was so sad. And I remember like, I was just talking aloud like, you see, like imagine Lilo from Lilo Mustache at 15. Nobody loves me. I'm all alone. And I just kept, and he looked at his girlfriend and he was like, was she drinking? And I remember just being, he was like, Destiny, what's wrong? And I was like cutting myself at the time. And Vito, I was, I had a lot of problems with self-mutilation. And I was like, look at me, I'm a mess. 
Actually, this isn't that funny. Oh, it got dark really fast. <laughs> oh my God. It's funny to me because I could look at it and laugh. But I was like, look at me, I'm a mess. And then I was like in the shower, just like, I'm a mess. And he was like, that's me, it's okay. Like, it's gonna be fine. And then my older, like my older siblings brought me into this room to smoke blunts with everybody who was older than me. I was like the youngest person in there. And I just kept talking wild shit. I'm surprised I wasn't throwing up, honey, because as much as I drink, please. Honey, I drank two glasses of wine and I need to throw up. So anyway, I um, I was talking wild shit, popping wild shit, just mad drunk, just popping shit. And my sister, Annie, who I've always shared on Instagram, she was like, yo, does you been, you drunk, sis? And oh my God, they just handed me a blunt to shut me the fuck up. And I was being really funny. And I like, I was like, I thought my foster brother's girlfriend was really hot she had huge tits and i remember just like she was like it's gonna be okay and she started rubbing my head and i very very i very very you know um what's the word um mischievously i laid my head right on her breast and i just held her and i was like mm-hmm just like mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah that's crazy i know what? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm good. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I used to do things like that all the time in high school. <laughs> okay. It's a funny story. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's like cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and then that girl friend that girl was she was incredible but she was wild let me just talk about my foster brother's girlfriend he met her on myspace um they slept together within two days and like basically she was like um you're not gonna cuff me so my bro like my foster brother kind of got like he was like got caught in like a little because mm -mm, you know whatever she was like well you're trying to hit it you gotta you can't you can't quit it this girl this, oh, she was lovely. I can't even talk shit about her because she treated me so good. But, oh, my God, she was insane. She got my foster brother's name tattooed above her vagina after a week of knowing him. I'm not kidding you. I am not kidding you. I am not kidding you. This woman had a fucking tattoo of my foster brother's... on her pelvic bone she was absolutely insane i can't i live for her i love a wild stunt but oh my god you're wild wild you're wild you're wild oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah i actually saw um i saw a picture of my foster brother's penis on, on our shared family computer and he was he wasn't he was honestly a problem there was so much uh, so much drama just a caribbean men will get you pregnant by hello i can't i can't uh i can't you see guys Oh, I just followed Kid Cudi today. I'll tell you a good special story about Kid Cudi. I saw him um, play uh, before he came out with Day and Night. 
Um, it was Summer Stage, New York City, um, 2007. I was 15 years old and my foster mother would have never let me go. So my dad took me for the weekend and let me go by myself with my friend. Press your feet. I'll blow you kisses while you sleep. This is my favorite, one of my favorite songs of all time. And this is one of my favorite lyrics of all time. I just want to, I gotta put y'all on real quick. This is the song. You see the Silver Sun pickups? It's called There's No Secrets This Year. Romantic lyrics. Oh. Lay your head down, rest your feet. I'll blow you kisses while you sleep And when I think you're safe and dreaming My escape plan's in full swing <laughs> Lay your head down, rest your feet No, lay your head down, rest your feet I'll blow you kisses while you sleep And when I know you're safe and dreaming My escape plan's in full swing like, I love that Why did your dad allow you to stay with your abusive foster mother? Well, um, uh, the people in my life always made my dad out to be um, an unfit parent, and that was the farthest thing from the truth. My dad was a really loving parent. I will say that he couldn't take care of me up until I was 16 because my father was going through a lot of personal things that, you know, I'm sure one can surmise. Um, and they were a little hard and um for what you know for those reasons my dad was a great parent and i spent every other weekend with my dad up until i was 16 so i didn't see my dad a lot but we were really close we were always so close and you know it was faithful it was every other weekend and then every weekend after the age of 14. um but like yeah like you know and my foster mother was a very manipulative person and she made my dad give me to her and she made it she made him believe that he was an unfit parent parent too which was not true my dad is a great parent and though he's made a lot of mistakes my dad instilled in me the most wonderful virtues you can give your child which is love unconditionally um uh, compassion humility and kindness and my dad was always just my best friend and he still is and i love him and i i um i was resentful of him for a long time but i know that um that i forgive him and i don't hold anything against him um we're all products of our environment and my family is no different, and I have enough maturity and knowledge to know how to distinguish the two, and I have since healed from it. Aw, oh, you guys are so nice. I swear, you guys treat me so good. Like, I don't ever go to a live where people are this nice. Like, every time I do an interview, I always say that the best part of being Princess Nokia is the people that support me. I always tell them that I have the greatest fan base, the nicest fan base. People are always so kind to me that I never get nasty. I mean, I do sometimes, occasionally. But that I am just, I'm giving love every day unconditionally and i just like i'm looking at all these comments i'm looking at them and i'm like i'm like the most uh, lucky person in the fucking world like i'm just so overwhelmed like i could cry like to know that i have this much positive support and love and constant re fostering of of wonderful energy and that everybody just wants to talk about music and fun things and everyone appreciates what i say like I'm so appreciative of that, you know, and I love having these. I don't like to do live too much because I always, sometimes I feel awkward on it, but 
I, I love I love this and I love the energy that we're um, we're regenerating between each other and I always just try to be honest and fun and my lives are always about just playing my favorite music from high school and answering some fun questions and just saying funny stories and just talking to people and you know saying hi to folks and that kind of stuff and all that kind of things the, oh I keep thinking about that hamburger that veggie burger I made earlier was absolutely fantastic. Oh, boom. Mm. I would love to accomplish that. Actually, now that we're on the subject of fly leaf, I would love to learn how to squeal. That would be sick. All right, answering, oh. You guys wanna see my little bit, you know, I'm not gonna show you this. I'll show you later. <laughs> Look at my nose. Like, I'm a crazy person. <laughs> Look at the shit out that's on my table. Okay, so I have a fairy village, guys. Like, my table is, like, about my fairies and stuff. So, like, I got, like, these moomin figures. And then I got all my fairy books here. The fairy bottle. The element encyclopedia of fairies. I mean, it's just, like, I'm ridiculous, right? So, like, yeah, see all of this. I love going to Michael's and finding, like, fairy statues and I buy them all if you ever wonder who's buying them it's me it, she's me <laughs> I'm screaming and here is Maurice my good friend Hey, Maurice, how you doing? Mm. I've seen better days. I'm sure you have, too. Maurice, you know I don't gossip about folks. Stop that. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. <laughs> oh, Jalissa, I miss you so much. Jalissa, I can't tell you how much I fucking miss you. Maurice miss you, too. Me and Maurice just missing you, girl. Art by Jar, guys. If you're trying to look for tattoos in the New York City area, my good friend Jar is an incredible artist. Um, she's an incredible tattoo artist, fine artist, businesswoman. She did my Frankenstein girls was are seemingly sexy tattoo. Um, hold on, I'm a little ash right now. Let me lick myself. Hold on. There we go. I was also not that great at putting oil on it upon getting it, but it's she's an incredible artist. This is my favorite tattoo from Mindless Self Indulgence. It's a Jamie Hewitt uh, tat, and then there's Piggy from Invader Zim. Hello, pigs. Oh, girl, why did I say Piggy? Oh my god, I'm ridiculous. Well, y'all, me and Maurice, we're going to have a fun old time. Um, we're going to watch some Netflix. We're going to smoke some good weed. We're going <coughs> to probably cook another burger. <coughs> got some gas, honey. I got the gas and this bra is killing me. Ugh. Ugh. I only put that on when I do lives because it gives me a little cleavage, but they just, they're just so bothersome. Oh, please don't leave. Oh, I don't want to leave you guys, but me and Maurice got a pump. 
Me and Maurice. You know, I know why his name is Maurice. I named him after my really sweet childhood friend who passed away when I was a teenager. I loved Maurice so much. Maurice was my fucking... I love Maurice. Maurice was my baby, honey. Maurice was the coolest and cutest boy in middle school. And in eighth grade, we sat next to each other and we became friends. And I was always kind of like the, like, you know, like the, the, the like weird gothy girl and like whatever. And like, we just didn't have much in common. But I knew a lot about cool stuff. And um, at this time, it's probably like 2006. And I loved, um, I loved like the pack from Los Angeles. Like I was like into Bay Area music. I was wearing skate shoes a lot. I was wearing like, I, um, I was like into nerd. I was like into Pharrell. I was into the clips and all that cool stuff of that era. And that's where we met in the middle bit. Like he was on his Harlem Flyboy shit. And I was on my LES like cool skater shit. So like, you know, skating became really popular in the hood. Um, like to that in those in that time and all the boys started wearing SBs and, and dunks and the cultures the cultures really went like that and the stuff that I liked, um, he was taken by me. He he I know that, that little that cute boy developed a little crush on me because I'll tell you, on the day, the night of the eighth grade prom, me and Maurice at the after party, honey. I regret to this day not giving him a handy in the staircase, period. Like, ah! Maurice was my, me and Maurice, the night of, the night of eighth grade prom, me and Maurice was dancing with each other the whole night. That was number one. Number two. Maurice refused to dance with any other girl that whole night. And bitches was mad at me. But can you blame them? Ah, anyway. Ah, me and Maurice. So, because everybody thought I was like some like shy, weird girl. You know what I mean? Bitch, I could dance. I could, I could shake ass. Like, you kidding me? Honey, is, is you shitting me? Dance circles around these bitches. Period. And um, I, get, I was, honey, I was there with my Luella Bartley cocktail dress from her target collection because i was that much into fashion i loved all the designer collections that was coming out of target and i had i had the don't even get me started there's so many layers to me please anyway um i was there looking really fucking cute i was throwing it back on the dance floor and morphe's was catching it baby all right yeah yeah morphe's was catching it and then cut to me and I'm on Maurice's lap and my hand was around him. And we just, we was just looking deep into each other's eyes. And he, it was kind of, I've seen this look in men in my, in my adult life where there are some, there are some men that when I'm looking into their fucking eyes and souls, they become very bashful and exasperated by my presence. And I pulled that witchcraft on Maurice right there and then, honey. And Maurice was taken by me, baby. And we just, we had a great night. And we didn't kiss. And I regret that, too. I regret not making out with him. I regret not kissing him. I regret not seeing him again. But we were just from different worlds. And Maurice was so fucking hot that Maurice was in the sixth grade. And Maurice got eighth grade girls. Maurice was fucking around with, like, high school girls already. Like, he was that cool. My sweetheart. Unfortunately, Maurice was shot um, outside of a party and, and died on the scene. And um, I never forget learning about that. It was like one of those like defining moments. It's like very like, you know, like the show on, on the block. You know what I mean? Like when it's like those like defining teenage moments. I remember I was in the basketball court with all my friends, my, you know, like my boys, like from the block. Cause I loved them and they loved me. Shout out to the Flyboys, of course, Franklin Plaza, Issa, you already know. And, um, you know, like the meme where it's like Princess Bubblegum or Sailor Moon with a whole bunch of crips? Honey, I'm convinced that was made about me because I'll show you the picture to prove it. Anyway, um, yeah, I was with my childhood sweetheart, Shamal, and I remember Sarah came and she was like, you know what's going on? And I was like, no. And she was like, yo, they shot Maurice. And I remember for two seconds, the world went completely silent. And I remember 
falling to the ground and mourning the loss of my beautiful friend and those beautiful memories that I had from eighth grade that meant so much to me. And he made me feel so special and so beautiful um, that night. And um, I just, I, 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 we lost a real one. We really lost a real one. And um, I remember uh, taking my skateboard and skating to the FDR, um, to Jefferson Park and sitting at, uh, sitting right at the highway um, and just, just having a real adolescent moment. Life had changed. Life had really changed. And I'll never forget that boy and that memory. So that's why, um, this is why this little gnome named Maurice. So I, oh, in my way, Maurice always with me. Cause honey child knows what I'd have done with Maurice by this time, honey. You see me? I'm something to see. Mm-hmm. All the boys in my school wish they had this, darling. I love you, Morbius. Oh, I love you, puppy. You're so fat, my dear man. You're so handsome and so cute and so gorgeous. I love you so much. <laughs> well, that's all, folks. I gotta go. Um, it was really, really lovely talking to all of you guys. You guys are so wonderful. Um, I should definitely do more lives and it'd be more interactive with you guys. I sometimes be, um, I think like, I just, I get in my head a lot and I just like, I feel like I should not talk to anyone. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, this life has just been so in, empowering and elevating and I just had the nicest time with you all and you guys have just made me feel so loved and I love you guys all so much and I'm just always so oh lots of love 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 lots of lots of lots of love um what am I gonna do for the remainder of the time I'm probably gonna do some coloring I've got this really incredible Jasmine Beckett Griffith coloring book. I got another one. Um, she's fire. I have like ill comic books. I'm gonna burp. I'm gonna take a shit. I'm gonna make some dinner. I'm gonna go catch a steam in the steam room. Um, and yeah, you know, you know what it gives. I love.